We told you about his visit and now he has gone. Billionaire Elon Musk going to the Texas border along with Congressman Tony Gonzalez to speak with authorities there. He says he wanted to see an unfiltered view of the situation. Of course, it's extremely bad right now. We've been reporting for days about the historic numbers. People just pouring into our country saying they're seeking asylum here in the United States. Uh, Musk went down to the border and he did a little selfie video on his social media platform X. Here's part of that. I'm uh, at Eagle Pass. I uh, just arrived and um, we're, we're just going to go around and, and talk to the um, the major officials uh, and, and law enforcement and whatnot that uh, are here as and, and just kind of eyeball the situation get a sense for what's going on and and uh, so you can get the kind of like the real story. Musk uh, did a couple of hits there. He says that he has a firm stance against allowing people into the country if they're breaking the law, but did have some interesting thoughts on what he thinks should happen with the immigration process. Let's bring in uh, the folks who know firsthand what is happening under Biden's administration. Sheriff Mark Lamb, P Pinell County, Arizona, Senate candidate in that state. Always great to see you. And Mark Morgan, the former acting CBP Commissioner, Heritage Foundation visiting fellow. Welcome into you both. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you, Bianca. Great to be on. It is great to have you. So obviously, Elon Musk, he's got the cowboy hat. He has the look here. He has the following. But how frustrating is it? I just want to ask you both, because you have worked tirelessly at the border with the government to try and get this situation rectified. I don't know if his visit's going to do anything, but the fact that, you know, he's there now, maybe getting more press after all these issues that we have talked about for years, does that infuriate you a little bit? Mark, I'll start with you. It, it does, Bianca, and I think you, you said it very well. And don't get me wrong, look, Elon Musk is, is obviously an intellectual genius, and he's forgotten more uh, about more things than I'll ever know. But one thing I know is the border, and some of the comments that he made were, were good comments, but others that he made were not, and it really shows that he lacks a fundamental understanding with respect to the cause and effect that the border security crisis has and illegal immigration has on our ability to secure the border. And Representative Tony Gonzalez, he's not the greatest ambassador for us as well. There are many others that I would have rather seen Elon with, like Representative Chip Roy down there or the steam uh, sheriff uh, Lamb that we're talking I was to right say, now. Right there. Yep. I mean, he missed an opportunity, but he might come back, uh, Sheriff. I, yep. I really do feel like this was a missed opportunity, but if he's caring and he says he wants unfiltered, you would give it to him. Absolutely. But look, let's give Elon Musk credit because he's come one more time than Joe Biden has. This administration just doesn't care about the greatest threat to America right now. You know, now we're hearing in the news about all these potential Chinese military men that are coming across. We've talked, uh, Director Ray issued a statement about the countless numbers of Russian spies. And we've been, we've been shouting from the rooftops about the amount of military age men coming from special interest countries. And I just don't seem to think that this administration cares or they're turning a willful blind eye to it. And that's what um, I hope Elon Musk starts to talk about. They always want to focus back on the humanitarian piece and these people claiming asylum. But the truth is, if they were claiming asylum, they should do it in the first country they get Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Uh, the, the United States is not the first country they got to. They went through probably six other countries before they got to, to America. So uh, we've got to get back to holding people accountable, upholding the rule of law, uh, enforcing Title VIII. And if you're not a true asylum seeker, if you've been in another country, go claim asylum in that country. Well, I remember stories where people had, you know, licenses from Guatemala. They were coming here. They've been living other lives for years. And then finally, like, Biden's in. Let's go now. We know that. Uh, Mark, I want to get uh, your reaction to something that a, a document, an agent posted yesterday. And this is truly the situation. All Border Patrol agents, it says here, have been pulled to other duties, leaving not a single agent in the field. Situation in Eagle Pass. And uh, yesterday was 10,000 in Del Rio, 3,000 over capacity. So they are being pulled from their duties to, as, as we just heard the sheriff say, it sounds like allow this. And I also want to get your take not only on that, but the fact is, this is this has now become a situation that is out of hand. And what what is it going to take for someone to say this can have this has to stop? I mean, when you go worst case scenario, that that I think yeah. is so frightening. 
Yeah, Bianca, look, we, we're, in, we're in broken arrow territory. The border patrol agents are overwhelmed. They're undermanned. Uh, and, and that, that, that uh, uh, reporter that you just saw, that's what's happening right now. This is another reason why we say that illegal immigration is not a victimless crime. It's both a cause and effect. What it causes is, is for the resources to be pulled off the front line, away from their national security mission, relegated to processing thousands of illegal aliens crossing the border every single day. What happens is that means that operational control is literally handed to the cartels for them to exploit. And then what happens next? Drugs, criminals, and potential national security threats are pouring across the border. And to answer the last question, this is what I'm very, very uh, uh, concerned about. I'm afraid that it's going to take a large-scale terrorist attack from terrorists across our southwest border, killing thousands of Americans before politicians in this country wakes up. I hope that doesn't happen, but um, I'm afraid it could. It's my fear, too. Uh, it really is. And I, I pray that that never comes to pass again. And there will be blood on many people's hands who are allowing this to happen. Got to gotta leave it there. But, uh, guys, come back real soon. Uh, Sheriff Lamb, Mark Morgan, appreciate your insight today and your honest conversation here. You bet. Sheriff Lamb, great to see you, bro. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you. Good to see you, too, Mark.